J Lo and Motown should not ever be in the same goddamn sentence. Y'all don't know what time it is. I got the black V neck on. Y'all, I, I told y'all, honey, once I get settled in, I was gonna be pushing the content out. Poke it out, poke it out. But girl, we got a couple things to talk about before we start on Miss Waste of Wednesday. I hope y'all stay in tune. But girl, let's get into some of this tea. So before we even get started, I wanted to talk about, I'm gonna get to it real quick. J-Lo being asked to do a tribute for Motown at the Grammy. <laughs> J-Lo, Motown, Grammys, it's a lot in one sentence, and I'm really trying to find the. I really feel like I need to do PEMDAS at this at this point. Like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, because I think Aunt Sally would do a better performance for um, a tribute for Motown before J Lo does. Like, girl, what is J Lo gonna get up there and do? Is she gonna take Ashanti's voice and start twirling around? Like, what, <laughs> girl? If y'all gonna do something like that, y'all might as well have. Uh, ja Rule in his five festival ass. Him and uh, what's that girl name? Ashanti girl. I didn't forget her name already. Y'all might as well have both of them get on stage and say, "If you're the way you are, girl, I really can't." Cause y'all know they said that she stole all of Ashanti's vocals, but she didn't do it. But the label she was signed with didn't really care. Both of them were signed to the same label. But the Grammys uh, have missed the mark again. They have asked J Lo to be a part of the Motown tribute. And the girls are not excited about it. Everybody is dragging it. And rightfully so, like, J-Lo is not talented like that. I don't I don't look at J-Lo to sing. I look at J-Lo to hear Mariah Carey say I don't know her. I look at J-Lo to see her dance and the green dress that she wore um, several years ago. Like, I don't see J-Lo out here doing anything of substance. Like, girl, she did some performance last year and she, like, she was tap dancing on roaches the whole time. I don't, I don't have a problem with J-Lo, but I just don't think she is the person to be doing this. And considering it's Black History Month, how disrespectful. Anytime I hear Motown, I'm automatically thinking of the greats. Like, girl, like, smoking Norfolk. Like, where are these people at? Are y'all not? I said smoking Norfolk, girl. I think it's Morgan Robinson, girl. I'm over. <laughs> but y'all know what I mean. Like, I'm thinking about the greats. Like, these people, like, these folks who, who made Motown what it is. All, like... Motown was built on the backs of black folks. Like, girl, like, what? And y'all getting J Lo ass to right here slide right across these black folks' back and grab a microphone and turn it off and mumble? Girl, no, ma'am. But I ain't gonna speak too much on J Lo, girl, because I ain't trying to have my mic messed up. But, girl, ain't nobody feeling you. You should just resign and just say, girl, I'm not gonna be able to do it. But moving on, girl, I'm, I'm gonna keep hopping right to the topics, girl. Miss State of the Union, we gotta talk about her real quick. Um, I was gonna probably talk about it in the live stream. I probably will do it tomorrow. It depends. I got so much going on this week. Miss State of the Union, Trump got up there and just started talking about a whole bunch of nothing. He was out of breath, couldn't speak. Girl, I think he spoke at least, he spoke for 82 damn minutes and didn't even lay out more than eight or 10 points. Like how do you have an hour and a half, damn near two hours, and you ain't even laying out eight fucking like agendas. Like girl, all that was, was letting y'all know what's going on for 2020. Like, I'm about to be out here slicing and dicing. Now, we're gonna talk about a couple of things that he said that's, that didn't make any sense. He started talking about the wall and how effective the, uh, the little fence thing that they did in El Paso, Texas, and you know, how he, you know, got the crime together, like all that. Girl, first of all, the crime in that area was up and peaked in, nine, in the 90s, and honey. And George Bush didn't approve the damn fence to be built to 2006 and they didn't start building to 2008 and the damn crime had already been going down before that. Uh, like, <laughs> I, I don't think if we want to sit up here and say immigrants or illegal aliens or whatever are coming in to make a better life, fleeing crime and all this and trying to find a better economy, I don't think they will be doing stuff to potentially put them in danger and their children in danger of getting assistance and resources and I, I just don't see it. Like these folks come over here trying to make money. Like these are some hardworking individuals 
who are trying to get this false ass American dream and there's no such thing as that. Like these people are coming over here to try to, you know, start a family. That they want their families to be able to live. These folks ain't out here trying to steal jobs that Americans don't even fucking want. Like I just don't understand it. And America has been built off of cheap labor, free labor. So I, I don't understand. Like this is the thing that y'all like. And these folks say they want to do it. They want to come over here and take the jobs that folks don't want, think they're too good for. They take these jobs and do this shit. They mind their business. And America says, oh, girl, this ain't right. Unless we call them, unless we doing slavery, we ain't here for it. I just, I don't understand it. I'm going to be honest. After watching the State of the Union, I got really depressed. And I, I really had trouble sleeping last night. I know, you know, Trump is not the worst president that we have had. Um, we've had plenty of worse racist presidents in the past. But to live in it during this time and to have a black president come um, not too long ago and, you know, this is the replacement and we're going, I feel like we're just going back. And there's so much conversation to be had about should we vote, should we not vote, you know, there's some couple of people saying that it doesn't matter who's in the White House, like they're still going to be supporting a system that does not believe in the better treatment of black and brown folks. Like we, like the whole country is built off of white supremacy. So to get, we're not going to be able to ever fix it. We're just going to have to like eradicate and get rid of it. Girl, that's a lot of work and I don't have all the answers, girl. Um, and that's what I'm thinking about talking about a little bit further when I do an In the Middle episode. Um, you know, I think the next In the Middle episode, we're going to be talking about identity politics and all that. Um, I'm just excited about doing that. If you are interested in having that conversation, stay tuned. A lot of things are coming forward. Um, and I just... I have so many questions and stuff, but I know a lot of folks were feeling the same way I was feeling watching it. He also talked about, you know, uh, what else did he talked about a couple of things that I can't even really remember because I was trying to hear what he's saying versus his breath. The child was a mess. But now that I'm thinking about melanin and shit, I'm actually thinking about Stacey Abrams getting in front of that camera and talking for 11 minutes and just hitting all her points. Now, Stacey Abrams said, you know, folks close to Stacey Abrams said that she did not watch the president's speech. She did. She just talked about her own stuff. And she went on like, Stacey Abrams is doing it. Like, there's a lot of people who were looking at her like, damn, like, this is the, like, the Democratic response. It was, it was cute. They say Abrams, I don't know what her political future is. I was not kind of here for her talking about the American dream and this and that, but I know she had to kind of conform a little bit to be able to do what she needs to do. And I think a lot of folks understand that sometimes I might have to take one for the team to be where I'm at. I will tell you a prime example. I had to take a team, I had to take one for the, for the team by myself, like myself, getting a place to stay. Like the person that was ultimately trying to approve me to be here, told me to log into my checking account from their computer to show them my, that I, like this was the deposits were accurate and I did Photoshop it. I felt so bad. I felt like shit. I felt like less than a person. And I felt like I wouldn't have been, had to do this if this, if it was a white person. But I said, I am tired of being in the position that I have been in for the last couple of months. So I, I'm willing to just take one for the team and it was wrong. You know, but I just like, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through another couple of weeks of trying to find somewhere to stay. Like, I just don't. So, you know, I think we all in some way, shape or form do it. We take one for the team, no matter what it is to make stuff happen. So, um, Stacey Abrams, like I said, she laid out all her points. She was articulate. She was positive. She was energetic. She sounded excited and she sounded like she was knowledgeable about the issues. And Donald Trump just didn't seem like he knew what the hell he was talking about. He sounded like he was talking out the side of his neck. Um, and speaking of the next girl, let me show y'all because some of y'all were dragging me, honey, and said that I ain't had no neck. That's the way the camera's positioned. Don't be trying to, girl. I did gain, gain a little weight over the last couple of months. I had one to the doctor. Them hoes had said, girl, um, your ass is borderline diabetic. You better get your shit together. Over the last three months, I have gained 23 pounds. And I have never weighed this much in my life. But like I said, the last couple of months have been exhausting. I think even my hair was taking a hit. Like, sis, like, look, but we're going to talk about it. We gonna get to it because I need to talk because a lot of folks were saying that you know my conversation about certain things made them you know look at them li their lives and say you know what I'm gonna get through this and all this so I'm glad that I can take my journey and my stuff that I've been through and make somebody else feel like they can pull themselves out of their situation. Speaking of pulling folks out of their situation, Miss um, Liam ne Neeson, let's talk to you for a quick second, good sis. Liam Neeson, uh, the guy from the Taken movies and stuff, and also played a, a lot of other stuff that I really like. He did an interview with some British um, radio station or something. I don't know what it was. And he was basically saying that 
um, after you know a loved one had been assaulted, sexually assaulted uh, by a black or brown person, every black person that he saw, he wanted to you know he wanted to bump into them and do something. He just looked for folks to do stuff. Like he was just trying to be on it. Like I'm gonna do. Like it was racist. It was racist. So he's trying to do this. You know. Clean it up, I miss the mark type of situation, say that he's not racist. I love white folks say they are not racist. I think every time a white person say they are not racist, um, another white president gets elected. <laughs> so we are, it's gonna be a lot of white presidents for years to come. Um, but to hear this man say this and try to clean it up, you meant exactly what you said. You took one incident and you said that all black folks do this. Like, you want to attack black folks just for one incident. Which means you looked at, you prejudged this person. You saw just race. That's all you saw with him, just a black person. Not somebody that is trash, but you saw their race. So you think that just because they are a black person, they're the more inclined to do harm to other folks. That's racism. That's racism. That's what it is. And considering how much white folks have done and what y'all continue to do, I don't understand how you're not bumping into them and girl, matter of fact, we can't even bump into y'all because we know y'all be having bad days if you want to tear up a movie theater, y'all want to tear up a day, um, a preschool, y'all want to tear up a damn a middle school, y'all just want to do all type of, y'all want to do some of the buildings and shit, like y'all are the folks out of here committing genocide and shit, like not us. Like, y'all are responsible for hundreds of millions of people dying, not black and brown folks, so I'm not understanding what he's talking about, so he want to do this like, like taking this my shit. But girl, it ain't that damn good to me for me to support and keep some money in your pocket, but you continue to be trash. So, council, council, and girl, we gotta talk about council culture too, because I know a lot of folks talking about some. Uh, you can't be counseling everybody. You can't counsel on human being. Bitch, I can counsel whatever shit I want to. I can counsel membership right now. Bitch, I can do a free trial for a week and counsel it, bitch. That's what counseling is, bitch. Get into it. Uh, speaking of counseling, we gotta talk about Jess isn't hilarious. Jess isn't hilarious thought it was her, her best interest to respond to a person that she didn't agree with on Instagram and called them the F word. She called them a faggot and you know she went on and kind of you know didn't really care about it until the next day she did the note um, iPhone app and said girl open this notepad girl because I done missed the, missed the um what's the shit she said I missed the mark girl Jess is hilarious I've always kind of supported her I like her rise to the top. I like her on real. I think she's actually a good actress. But to see her comment and response to something like that was, it was garbage. And for you to, like, that so quick to run, come out of your mouth is challenging for me. Like, why did, was it so easy for you to so say? You could have said so much other stuff. Like, you are a comedian. So when somebody responds like that, you should be able to clap back at them without calling them a slur. Like I, I did like it was very lazy, it was very tired, and I think you should get your ass um, remanded for that. I think something you know might need to happen to you, and I don't think you need to be counseled because. And someone was like, "Wait, wait, she said what she said. She apologized. If you are not motherfucking queer, you're not trans or any of that shit." Don't tell me what word offended me. You can't accept apology from a community that you are not affected by. Like, cause if that had been any, like if that had been anything else, girl, we would have been all on them. And we need, our, we need our black folks to be out here supporting our black queer uh, females, women's, men's, uh, uh, non-binary folks. We need our black folks to support our people in the LGBT community. We need that. And some of y'all be so quick to accept an apology from a community that you are not of, and it'd be very confusing to me. Maybe we'll talk about that. Also, good news for the Culture Podcast will be returning next week. Shout out to everyone who were able to help and support for the Culture Podcast, as well as King Reed. Honey, we've been able to do a lot. I've been able to get some shit together. So, girl, like, we're fixing some stuff and getting some stuff ordered. Like, I know Miss Alisa not to look at me like, girl, if you order one more thing, bitch, if you drill one more thing, so I'm just working on trying to make sure that the sound for Further Culture Podcast is up to par. Everything is sickening, so we'll be able to continue to provide quality content for you all because, bitch, we was in a broom closet recording um, last, last season, girl. Like, it was like we was in a broom closet sweating. Like, girl, so I don't want to, like, listen, girl, for the Culture Podcast is here to stay and it's not going anywhere as long as we have people like you all to continue to support and continue to uplift us. We appreciate it. So be checking out that new episode coming next Wednesday. I need to see them shoulders bouncing. But that's all I want. I wanted to give y'all a quick little update of everything that was going on. I'm trying to get back into the spirit of, you know, 
getting all this content back out. Um, I know I had taken a break for like two weeks, but I had a lot of stuff going on. But we are here. We are ready. We're ready to get the work done. I love you all so much. Tell me about any topics, anything you all want me to talk about. I know some people are still interested in me talking about the Fire Festival. I might do a video on that later on, some other stuff. I love you all so much, and I'll talk to you all later on tonight. Bye. Hey, Shikana girl. Hi. How you doing? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm all right. Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, I was just trying to see how your hair was. Oh, I just got a ponytail. I just got off work. Oh, okay. I just got a ponytail. That's all. Yeah, that's all I was trying to Maybe see. Maybe I ain't. I was just trying to see your hair <laughs>